Jace from All Hail Internal Combustion. We finally are getting to this video. I wanted to do a comparison. Uh, I have two blocks right next to each other on the 455 and 326 and all their similarities and their differences. Um, some people might know just the basics are that all the bolts and stuff is exactly the same. Your oil pan, your valley pan, doesn't make any difference. So this is a Pontiac V8 oil pan. It fits on a 455. Obviously the caps aren't on this, but it would, uh, fits right on a 326. Either way, same exact oil pan, 326, 455. Uh, same with the valley pan. It's exactly the same. Intake manifold exactly the same. The heads are the same physically how they all constructed together. So I don't think there's any other American V8s that are that versatile between all their cubic uh, differences in different series of motors, but they're identical front and back the tops just the bore changes. So we'll go over some of those numbers. Uh, I have them written down so that I don't mess them up. But they're exactly the same. The timing covers, the cams, you could technically put a 326 cam in a 455. It might run like crap, but they're exactly the same. So this block is identified with the 455 marking here on the driver's side there's a four five five down here in the bottom corner and then the other identification there's some date codes up here there's a 71 uh, and then there's a number across the back here as well right on the right side of the head where the head will go on to anyway so this has been identified as a 71 455 with a four barrel this would have been rated at 325 horsepower with 455 foot-pounds of torque. And those numbers are at 4,400 RPM and 3,200 RPM. The stroke is 4.21 with a bore of 4.15, uh, 8.2 to 1 compression. Now how that compares to this is a 66, 326, two barrel. The stroke is... 3.75 so a lot shorter and then 3.71 a lot smaller bore so there's your diff your main differences now Pontiac V8's shared connecting rods though these had the exact same connecting rods they changed the stroke with the crankshaft so the 71 455 high output I'm guessing uh major difference with that is that there, this is actually a four bolt block so like you would say a uh, four bolt main small block chevy you'd be excited about that because it would be punched out it would have those holes tapped and it would have a four bolt main cap for the crank this that is the only difference between physically this motor to the high output 455 you get new caps you could do four bolt main but then you add the cost of line boring the motor again so that you have a nice even match between your new four bolt caps. I'm sure there's somebody that could find a set of caps and probably get them to match up pretty good and probably manage to do something like that. But I would I would bet that those caps aren't cheap either. So Yeah, because you always want to keep your caps with your block when you're doing teardowns because they're like a mated pair originally from the factory because they line board that block with those caps and they might look close but that's some place you don't want to be off even by a thousandth or two so but the uh, stroke and the bore were exactly the same on the 455 how i would put and the compression was actually the same so they probably definitely changed the horsepower torque ratio with just the cam change and probably uh different style heads I'm sure and and we'll listen we'll get into a whole nother video on heads because there's a lot to go through on Pontiac heads and I think we've got it pretty much figured out but that'll be a separate video
So and there's that 455 number that he was talking about. There's another one here. And there's another one over on that side. And you've also got some information on the front of the pad where the timing cover would go. Kind of hard to see the numbers, but there it is on the 455. And we've also got numbers over here on the 326. And these numbers would basically tell somebody that this is a 1966 motor. I'm not, I mean... They went into a few different cars, but that's one of the things once you establish your cubic inch, you look to these numbers and the date codes and everything else to figure it all finally out. So, as I mentioned, the rod length was the same on both of these. Uh, two and 2.249 rod journal, except short deck 261 and 301s. Uh, anyway, the stroke changed. Plus the main journal size also, 389, 400. They all had three inch main journals and the 421, 428, 455 had three and a quarter main journals. So, uh, and, and another a, difference on these blocks is that's the small journal crank and that's the big journal crank. So in a certain year they switched over and changed the diameter of your mains on the crankshaft. Uh, oil passage hole was different wasn't it yeah the oil passage hole on the like they break these things down into older and newer pontiac blocks so this 1971 would be considered the newer pontiac block you got the pan in it yeah so on the older pontiac blocks you had two core plugs on the side which are there and on the newer Pontiac block, you have three core plugs on the side. And you'll notice with motor mounts, you had your motor mount location here. On this one, because it was available on a Firebird as well, you had multiple points where you could put your motor mounts at. So that was another thing that changed. But it's still basically the same block casting, but with modifications. This is an oil return hole that goes behind the upper cam gear. That's smaller on the newer series block than it is on the older series block. Almost a quarter of an inch. Yeah, almost a quarter of an inch smaller. Not exactly sure why they did that, but they did 67 it. 67 is when they changed that over. So, um, oh, that's the build sheet. Let me skip over and run over there. That's the heads. So we've uh, been writing things down on the motor and the head and try to keep organized exactly what we have so that when we're looking information up and building a motor, you know, we don't want to do a trial by error. Like, let's just throw these heads on this block and see what kind of compression ratio we got. <laughs> we don't want to end up putting a lot of money into something and it'd be very sad because the compression is super low or might be work with some builds but that's not what we're going for an all motor naturally aspirated is what we're going for here so the pontiac 326 a little bit of history uh took a 389 and reduced the bore uh of a 4.06 inch to a 3.78 and made a 336 but marketed it as a 326 possibility it's a possibility they did that to avoid confusion with the 336 that pontiac put in the 50s trucks which is actually one of my favorite videos uh, Steve Mignotti put up with the, he had this GMC truck and the fender folded out and it was really cool to see that there was an old Pontiac V8 in that GMC truck from the 50s, a 389 or a 336. So, and the thing was stripped down, but it was definitely a Pontiac block and it was kind of cool. And GMC was the only one to borrow Pontiac and sometimes Oldsmobile, I think as well, but kind of a cool little feature. So. Uh, GM put restrictions on the cubic inch size for the Pontiac V8 in a certain year. So they probably still had some 336s sitting around and just said they were 326s. I'm sure it went to something to that effect. Uh, lots of stuff going on in the 60s with uh, the makers, uh, GM and Ford. Uh, so with a 8.6 to 1 compression ratio... Uh, it was rated at 250 horsepower. Now that would be the 336 with a two barrel, uh, with a 10.25 compression ratio. 
Uh, it was rated at 260 horsepower or with a two barrel, but they offered a high output version, uh, 10 and a quarter to one compression ratio. Uh, had a uh, Carter AFB carb four barrel on it, intake, full exhaust, it was rated at 280 horsepower. So that's actually pretty good for back in those days. Uh, they Pontiac uses the heads to control the the compression in these. Uh, the pistons are almost all flat top. They bear the most of them come up to the top, I believe. Uh, don't quote me on that one, but. So in 1964, Pontiac set the bore to 3.71 to achieve the actual 326 cubic inches. In 1964, GM set a cubic inch limit. I just went over that, 330 uh, cubic inches. So that put <laughs> the 336 six cubic inches over. So anyway, in 1965, Pontiac reworked the heads, the intake, and better flow, bigger valves, and installed a 192 intake 1.66 exhaust. Uh, I'm guessing that's a cam you yeah, have listed there. Uh, this made the high output 326 at 285 horsepower. Um, so back in 1964, I was pretty respectable for a smaller cubic inch V8. Uh, compression ratio increased to 9.2 uh, 9 to 1 on the 326s in 1966. So this motor here is the first increase in compression. And it, it was really nice, I think, this year gap of having this 66 326. Is it did have some power. I didn't take it out because it was broken. Uh, I mean, it was losing oil pressure and I didn't want to completely grenade it. Because, you know, it's still a Pontiac V8. It could be punched out to a 455 if it ever came to that in 50 or 100 years. Uh, if you kind of think about it like that, you know, you might not just want to trash something because it's not desirable now. Might be, might be the last of something someday. Uh, so the compression ratio raised. And then in 67, the 326 high output could be had in a Firebird Tempest or Le Mans. 1968 was the end of the 326 and the 350 was born so uh now we're going to switch over to the 455 hopefully that was some you know anybody that's interested in the history of these motors when they were being made or even help identifying your motor like if you have some guy have his 326 over here and he grinds all the numbers off of it you can still identify it maybe with some of this information so um the night the 455 was born in 1970 production from 70 to 76 it really didn't have a long run so it was the largest cubic inch motor that pontiac ever produced uh most powerful version had 370 horsepower with 500 foot pounds of torque uh, the Bonneville Catalina, the Executive GTO Firebird Formula Trans Am, Le Mans Tempest, and the GT37 all could be had with the 455. Uh, in 1971, Pontiac started dropping compression and detuning engines due to emissions. We all know that, and it was a sad, sad time. I wasn't around back then, but anyway, 1972 horsepower ratings changed. And they started using SAE net instead of SAE gross ratings. Yeah. Pops wrote these. So, anyway, Pontiac offered <laughs> several varieties of the 455 through 1974, even one Super Duty model. We went over the compression. Well, the compression ratio <laughs> varied between 7.6 to 1. Wah, wah. <laughs> in 19 uh, from 1975 to 76 but it got up to a 10 and a quarter to one in 1970 high output used aluminum intake large valve heads round port heads and aggressive cams to achieve those horsepower numbers uh, it was only made for about three years 1970 to 1973 so that was actually exact um, then they came out with the Super Duty. Oh, uh, yeah. The Super Duty had four bolt mains like we talked about. So they're all the 455s are drilled for it. They just need a different cap and they'd be bored that way. So they all had provisions for a dry sump oil forging. Oh, oh, oh for forged rods. Sorry. Dry sump for oiling, forged rods, and nodular iron crank. So 
uh, the cranks around here. We have those. That could be a whole separate video because that's a whole other thing to understand and where the numbers are on those. But anyway, uh, the Super Duty actually used an iron intake and they are heavy on these things. So I knew the two barrel I took off the 326 about broke my back leaning over the car. <laughs> uh, so in 1975, the high output name came back. But now it was an option for the engine that didn't increase horsepower at all. That ended one year later. So that's some of the history of the Pontiac V8. Hopefully this is a little snidbit. We noticed that there's not like a whole lot of information out there. And some of it's not super specific. And you know, sometimes when you're really identifying a motor, it's nice to act if someone has that same exact motor as you, maybe a different date code, it's, it helps to identify it. So... Hopefully this was helpful. Now we can get back to putting a 302 on the stand. The 326 will come out. We're going to do some testing on trying to keep the motors from getting rusty sitting around in the garage. So we're going to do some tests on that motor. So stay tuned. We'll, we'll release our testing results eventually. But anyway, thanks for tuning in. James from All Hail Internal Combustion. Make sure you like and subscribe and all that good stuff. See you next time.